The Paradox of Choice, Exploring the Impact of Decision-Making Introduction It has been noticed that anxiety associated with having to make a decision between different types of products is something that has been known for a long time. But only in recent years, economists started to explore its real nature and implications. The main reasons for this were two advances. Because of the large-scale development of digital goods, it became feasible to keep track of every single choice that an individual makes. And finally, because of that, it became clear that people indeed often make suboptimal decisions, leading to different forms of regret or later dissatisfaction. In this study, we will provide an overview of various contributing fields, starting by exploring the issue from a philosophical perspective and continuing by presenting previous psychological and economic research. We will conclude the paper by presenting some possible policy implications and future research directions. Multiple multinational websites with hundreds of political parties and thousands of different choices of what decision to make or where to spend what time is something that overwhelms individuals. In economics, this phenomenon is known as the paradox of choice, and it is considered one of the most pressing issues for both consumers and commercial establishments. At first glance, one may ask why more choices are not good but bad. Indeed, it would seem that having more choices is always better than having less. However, it has been noticed that a situation where there are many options could actually lead to dissatisfaction or other forms of negative outcomes. For instance, in their well-known experiments, Iyengar and Leper, 2000, demonstrate that individuals, given the choice between a large number of different types of jam, were much less likely to actually purchase one than those given the choice of only three. Chapter 1. The Significance of Decision-Making While the benefits of choice cannot be overstated, self-motivation, confidence, autonomy, and an improved sense of happiness, consideration of what happens in the face of abundant choices is often overlooked. Here, the fosters of economic theory disagree. At the heart of the paradox of choice, is the theory that with increased options comes increased dissonance. At the extreme end, if not managed well, uncertainty and a sense of being overwhelmed can lead to decision paralysis. While there is some truth in the argument that we like and covet choices, the potential downfalls of abundant choice are much more pronounced. Traditional utility theory argues that more is better and increased choice is purely positive in every context. However, recent research shows us that in the context of human choice, an abundance of choice is not merely overwhelming, but actually distressing for the chooser. This cognitive dissonance challenges our current economic theory. The paradox of choice is the term used to describe the current feeling of conflict resulting from the increased choices in our lives. While increases in options can be seen as beneficial, they can also be overwhelmingly confusing and lead to decreased motivation and hasty decision-making. The implications of choice and the effect of the paradox of choice on self-motivation are becoming more and more important as people continue to face an increasing array of choices in the form of open labor markets, broad access to higher education, and the advent of a global marketplace. Regardless, the ramifications of the paradox of choice and its impact on a myriad of important quality of life factors still remain relatively unexplored. In line with individual differences in frequency, direction, and quality pursuit or responses in handling complex apparent situations, cognitive resources are gathered in social, personal, and consumer settings like decision-making, persuasion, or resistance against it immediately after perceived choice complexities are shown to deteriorate to the quality of decisions and judgment involved in complex task demands. One can distinguish between valuable and regretted choice process. While the former relates to selecting without any inclination towards missing alternatives or wanting something other than what received, the latter is manifested once compromisers are not able to maximize the received value. Maximizers superfluous but essential values or valuing the exchanged attributes and satisficers rapidly rejecting what's non-essential. 
The concept of choice overload suggests that an excessive number of items detracts individuals from choosing and that they will ultimately be less satisfied with selections in service and product markets. The selections in the form of too many options can be paralyzing, leading to decreased well-being through selection deferral, regret of missed alternatives, or suboptimal choice. As a very fundamental principle in a set of heuristics in judging outcomes, satisfaction, and fairness, Satisficing is viewing at intertemporal choice as a sequence of valuation tasks where the valuations are influenced by the previous appraisals. The paradox that more choices can lead to less discretion seems to be counterintuitive given that each option added theoretically offers utility. Several mechanisms have been proposed to explain why more options may lead to fewer choices being made. One posits that a decision maker once aware of the necessity to forego some choice options in order to progress to making choices, experiences an increased opportunity cost, which inhibits his or her ability to make a concrete or satisfying decision. Another more consumer-centric perspective assumes that the provision of a greater number of available options can lead to decision-maker fatigue and less effective decision-making. Alternatively, expansion in the number of choices may lead to higher expectations of satisfaction or regret. Variants of this expectation-based decision problem model propose that propagandized or publicized knowledge of a coalitional reference point as the measure of expectations and preferences carries decision-making implications. Generally, market-based decision phenomena are complex in nature, and this is a bound when it comes to consumer purchases. With more choice available than ever before, many people have come to look upon choice itself with increasing trepidation and to view a plethora of options almost as a burden rather than as a source of liberation. As a result, efforts to expand opportunities to make choices may undermine people's psychological well-being. To support this idea, a paradox is explained wherein increases in the number of choices, termed choice overload, result in general dissatisfaction with a selected choice or choices. More specifically, choice overload may lead to a greater propensity to forego making decisions, trade-offs more likely to be experienced as negative events, less satisfaction with decisions, an increase in choice regret, and a reduction in feelings of subjective well-being. As a result, Conditions in which an increased number of choices are offered to consumers result in two negative outcomes. First, negative psychological effects, reactions, attributions, and evaluations. And second, less actual choice and decision-making processes taking place. Both negative effects are argued to be the result of increased opportunities to make choices. Chancellor and Lubomirsky suggest that these findings can provide a definition of the variables that cause choice overload and reasons why such effects occur. Overall, it is crucial to understand that while choice is important, excessive choices can have detrimental effects on individuals, ranging from decision paralysis to decreased well-being and satisfaction. Recognizing these negative consequences is vital in order to strike a balance between providing options and avoiding choice overload. Chapter 2. The Psychological Effects of Choice Iyengar's study provokes some important questions considering the society we live in today, where we have countless choices when we go to the supermarket, for example. As society has evolved, it's natural for a larger number of products and services to emerge. However, this same abundance is making us worse decision makers. In their new book, The Paradox of Choice, Barry Schwartz and Slater Tom Butler suggest that this phenomenon is causing us daily dissatisfaction. According to them, even after we have made a decision, it is inevitable that we will immediately begin to fear if our choice was the most favorable, and soon after the passing of time, regret sets in. A considerable number of choices leads us to believe that we ourselves are responsible for everything that happens in our lives. Therefore, a person who knows how to wisely choose will invariably yield impressive results, and then we begin to believe that the choices, more than anything else, make us happy. According to research done in the 90s by the American psychologist Sheena Iyengar, known as the Jam Study, it can be healthier and more coherent for a person to buy one of six flavors of a product, a snack, 
than one of 24 flavors of the same product. To prove it, her team set up a stand in a market with these different flavors of jam and recorded the percentage of buyers who stopped and the percentage that bought something. At the end of the day, the team had collected $231 and had sold 37% of the people who stopped something. The next week, the team repeated the process. The only difference is that they had 24 flavors available and the team had collected $202 and sold 1% of the people who stopped something. The Hangar studies have proven that whether we are deciding which pasta to buy in the supermarket or which activity we would like to do on a Saturday, having too many choices can be paralyzing, and this phenomenon she defines as the choice overload paradox. Decision fatigue increases when the decision-making process is complex, time-consuming, and exhausting, leaving individuals with a sense of remorse and dissatisfaction. However, when decisions are less complicated, the choice is straightforward and more natural, and consumers are more content. People generally find purchasing a house, car, or college more satisfying than buying groceries. The average individual finds happiness in paying bills. Problems arise only if expenses grow more and more absurd as it outlines the paradox of choice. To combat decision fatigue, people notify themselves of the goals at hand. A series of studies by Virginia Mittal and associates show that a number of solutions exist to reduce decision fatigue while shopping to align decisions with values. The prevalence of overwhelming choices in modern life does not just create a lack of contentment when making decisions, but rather leads to decision fatigue and cognitive overload. As the choices necessitate reasoning, people become drained as they look for ways to analyze and compare each of the choices. An overabundance of choices leads individuals to experience decision fatigue as they struggle with the process and fear making an incorrect decision. The massive number of choices can also invoke cognitive overload, leading individuals to work through every component of the decision at one time instead of breaking it into a series of smaller choices. Some people may even decide that the opportunity cost of the time spent comparing and analyzing a good deal is not worth the effort, leading potential consumers to forsake the deal entirely. The stress and difficulty involved in sifting through options and alternatives, known as the concept of mental trade-off difficulty in explanations of decision-making, adds to decision fatigue and cognitive overload. Studies that actually suggest that the reason that impatience prevails over making rational choices is due to consumer regret. In an analysis performed in a supermarket in the United States, they observed that the greater the choice of product, the higher the level of difficulty in making a decision becomes. When not satisfied with the purchase, the consumer regrets the amount spent on the goods as well as the time spent in choosing it. This leads to dissatisfaction, which according to is a feeling that is more common and is created only by bad choices. Choice, as states, is a resource spent making a decision, and if it is bad, a consumer can suffer what is called buyer's remorse. This theory serves as a base for a lot of arguments, as it tests. Consumption plays a key role in societal norms, and thus informs a big part of the study of consumer behavior. Consumers are impatient buyers if their goals align with purchasing the needed product, and normally if a product is about to be out of stock as stated. Public markets experience the same behavior from consumers, being more impatient on days that are hotter. This impatience to access shopping malls and other open spaces shows what call a constraint behavioral pattern in consumers' movements. The act of choosing is itself a complex decision-making process. It is often, however, also regarded as an essential process of everyday life, and it is precisely because of this role attributed to the choices that the subject has aroused some interest in different areas of knowledge. Barreto, 2005, states that the increase in choices is directly related to human development, and according to Kamara and Abramove, 2001, political models of democratic orientation are based on a society that has paths and uses in a rational way the act of choosing. However, the fact that the choices have become something of great importance in the daily life of contemporary society initially points to a scenario that in some cases resembles an inexorable evil of choice. 
Jenkins and Lupton, 2006, point to the possibility that the fact of having to choose be exacerbated by the fact that people question the meaning or legitimacy of those choices. Aredo, 2005, and Apajare, 2008, also raise questions about what people will do the choices when they no longer seem relevant. In the end, the excess of choices can lead to decision fatigue, cognitive overload, and a lack of contentment in decision-making scenarios. Chapter 3. Understanding Decision-Making Processes However, increased choice can lead to decision difficulty and dissatisfaction in the choice made. Over 30 years, it has been observed in consumer behavior research that increased choice has a positive effect, e. adding more products for consumers to choose from leads to profits. This could be seen as reflecting the increase in probability that there is at least one set of product alternatives that the consumer can select and be satisfied with. Yet, an extensive research body proposes that when it comes to the number of alternatives in the initial choice set, more may not be better. Interpreting the impact of decision-making If the total number of alternatives adds significant value to the choice process, improving marketplace transactions with greater competition, then what is it about the decision-making process that can lead to increased numbers of available alternatives, impeding the ability to come to a decision? In the last two decades, there has been a significant surge in research investigating the factors influencing decision-making under uncertainty. Given the breadth of decisions made by consumers on a daily basis, researchers have been particularly interested in understanding the influences on consumer decisions as well as the effectiveness of various strategies for dealing with the increased choice in today's marketplace. Choice is an important component of decision-making. When consumers are required to make a purchase, they usually consider more than one brand or variety or product. Even when one considers low-involvement products, at the very least, consumers consider multiple brands or varieties of a product. Richarm and Rayleigh found that a typical dining out occasion involves selecting a restaurant from among 164, narrowing food choices to 20, selecting a meal from 12 options, and considering 15 ice cream flavors. The expected utility maximization models reflect the assumption that people are rational actors by postulating that a person will not put himself in a situation that will put his life well-being at stake. To determine whether a person is putting his life at stake, the expected utility maximization model uses the utility concepts and other decision precepts in a rational model of choice to efficiently describe the given person's decision-making process. For instance, the decision to trade off securitized protection and carbon emissions can be determined using an expected utility maximization for a risk-neutral individual. Several fields often refer to expected utility maximization models for comparing hypothetical and practicable, optimal solutions and carry out various computations about the welfare implications for every facet of human life. Although earlier social science models had assumed that individuals are rational actors who are cued to act via deliberative means to attain positive outcomes, the past 40 years have dramatically changed the precepts of these models as a mix of irrational agents capable of efficient and rational actions. Perhaps one of the central precepts of rational decision models is that of utility, a tool which is effective for measuring a person's welfare or happiness with the consequences of risky decisions. The underlying premise of the utility concept is that given a choice between two or more risky decisions, where each has a determinative probability for producing a certain outcome, an individual will always choose the option that offers the greatest potential utility of happiness. As such, the components of the utility concept are observable measures of choice that appear to have practical implications and uses applicable to human subjects as modules of a process termed expected utility maximization. It is now recognized that the problems of dynamic choice include a whole range of possibilities that were unsuspected a dozen years ago. In this article, I will present in the first chapter the original behavior analysis of decision biases in both risk and uncertainty against the rationality of decision-making theory. The second chapter deals with non-standard probability concepts 
that arise in the generalization of expected utility theory. Decision biases should not be unique to the problems of risk-taking under financial stress, as Arrow, 1971, has suggested. Initial research on risk decisions in games showed rather spectacular emotion-driven discontinuities, which generally refuted the then-popular expected utility model of risky behavior. This section aims to review the major works in behavioral economics that have caught the attention of most scholars in the field. These works have focused on the widely recognized theory on risk in economic literature. However, many biases emerge in decisions under different circumstances that are of the same interest as the original ones. These behavioral prejudices actually amplify the importance of non-standard probability concepts in generalizations of expected utility theory. Today, the existence of possibility of preference reversal under uncertainty no longer surprises us. In natural choice environments, this can occur even under probabilities. This is not because the decision maker has made the wrong procedural choices, but because complementarity between probability and preference, as well as issues pertaining to independence, are also involved in individuals' perception and evaluation of acts. Beyond aiding an initial expectation or hypothesis about a decision problem, heuristics have the ability to structure risk comparison by adapting simple biases to the environment. Heuristics facilitate a coevolution of cultural and biological traits, crucial for promoting rational choice in adaptive environments with severe time or processing restrictions. Under these restrictions, where a heuristic is well adapted and the correct information given, performance in practical decision problems was as good as optimal. Adapting simple rules to the environment, however, presupposes an underlying alternative random portfolio of various potential decision rules, which co-evolve in an environment. Ultimately, this evolutionary presumes a fit and adaptive market for firms, the source of product choice constraints used in our team's study. The adage that less is more permeates scientific phenomenon, as well as everyday decision-making strategies. Conforming to heuristic practices, bounds with which to compare and categorize products, a limited array, in the case of real-world choice, makes choice less paralyzing, more simple, and more satisfying. Predictions derived from the work of Gidrenzer conceptualized heuristics as simple decision rules, which reduce search effort in finding solutions to complex problems. These decision strategies can be error-prone or mathematically suboptimal compared to more complex decision rules. However, heuristics allow individuals to exploit the information structure in an environment by eliminating irrelevant information. As normative rules refashion attributes or cues that humans are sensitive to in their environment, optimizing the perception of that information into easily contactable categories. For example, when making inferences about whether an individual will benefit or suffer from tackling a particular task, the gaze heuristic generated quick and important decisions. The gaze heuristic allowed individuals to make efficient choices based on limited information leading to quicker decision-making processes. This shows that sometimes a simplified approach can be more effective than a complex one. Chapter 4. Factors Influencing Decision-Making Finally, family and social determinants, with overall participation of all members in decision-making, is rare in many cultures where there's a fixed division of decision-making responsibilities. Motivational factors evolve from the beliefs that many choices exist. However, our resources are finite, so in order to have a meaningful life, there is a need to manage such choices. Decisions not only consume time, but also are challenging, financially expensive, and may even affect mental or physical health. People are motivated to the achievement and existence of happiness. However, it is not only taken to be pleasant, but is also the absence of pain and suffering, and has been acknowledged as admirable, as opposed to the stress and conflict resulting from too much choice. Self-determination factor can be described in two perspectives, one known as decision responsiveness and the other decision skin. Personal immediacy to not only process, but also respond to a decision 
may not be consistent from one individual to another. Similarly, competence and decision skill varies from individual to individual. Personal uniqueness is based on the understanding of the consumer's preference or desires. Thus, it is said that no two individuals are the same, which is also true for decision-making. Since cultural differences exist and there are diverse factors surrounding the decision-making process, no two individuals are likely to decide in the same manner based on similar stimulus and frame of reference. As stated, culture has an important influence on consumer decision-making styles. People belonging to different national cultures may exhibit different styles of decision-making for similar product categories. There are several factors which influence our decisions. These include 1. Culture 2. Personal uniqueness 3. Self-determination factor 4. Motivational factor and 5. Family and social determinants. Each one will be discussed in more detail. Where some societies can boast of collective achievements that exceed the sum of the contributions of their individual members, the Philippines benefits from both individual and collective competition. In the Philippines, decisions are made by small, informally developed coalitions whose members are relatively unconcerned with the external impacts of their decisions. In this culture, priority tends to be placed on the existing social order, and individuals are attentive to the way their behavior affects those around them. Filipinos focus on understanding how they can assist in the happiness and well-being of their social group, uncertainty avoidance, and utilize the harmony and collectivism levels of the culture to build morale and collaborative efforts to accomplish work. This approach allows Filipinos to build on the existing strengths and weaknesses of the decision process, method their culture partners with the individual decision-making approach. With the rapid globalization of the modern world, it is increasingly difficult to understand the differences in decision-making processes across the globe. It could be argued that one's values, components of culture, the culture-wide probability of an event occurring and factors such as the great man theory, which asserts that history is driven by a small number of outstanding people, may not influence the Filipino decision process as these influences are not commonly shared among other cultures in the same way. Ralston explains that many Western theorists wrongly assume that non-Western cultures make decisions in the same way as they do since they do not take into account understanding their own culture and instead assume that other cultures follow the same path. It is important that businesses and individuals are aware of these differences because one decision process is not necessarily more effective than another. Effectiveness should be judged depending on the decision-making context involved. In a high-choice environment, unpredictable and sometimes irrational choices pose a threat of appeal. However, our ability to redefine choices as appealing is what makes us unique from other species. We refine our behaviors, goals, and values to make choices fulfilling. Whether a person perceives a choice as causing anxiety rather than pleasure or reward depends on the person's emotional perception. In other words, personal values and beliefs are largely subjective because what drives our behaviors and choices depends on how we feel and have learned from our experiences. Previous funny drama studies examine consumer vulnerabilities to deterministic patterns and preferences rather than outlining decisions as idiosyncratic personal stories. After all, we are often left wondering why we made a particular choice when looking back on our lives. In general, consumers' personal values and beliefs are likely to influence whether choices are rewarding or stressful, depending on how well those choices are made. In residues theory, social scientists use values to define what others expect from our consumption choices. In other words, when we receive what we expect from our purchase, we make a rewarding decision. Conversely, when we realize that our choice is not quite right, we are anxious and seek to understand why we have made that choice. We will then look to friends or others to explain and justify our decision. That is why people who share the same beliefs and values tend to form groups to reinforce social consensus. When people share common beliefs, the decisions of others are likely to be the same as their own, 
thereby validating individual consumption choices. When looking for information and advice, people tend to stick to their values and beliefs when seeking the social consensus necessary for a decision. Similarly, people are comfortable when they meet people who share their values and beliefs because others are likely to share and confirm our attitudes, behaviors, and opinions. The desire to maximize leads individuals to make more social comparisons as a way to inform their decision and rely on and integrate the opinion of others to make better decisions, which may be a result of putting pressure on oneself to choose the best. As argued, while it is known that one person's opinion might influence another one's opinion, it is less clear how significantly individuals are influenced and under what circumstances. Mentioned in their study that the seriousness of the situation influences how information is processed and when considering both experts' opinions, participants were more affected by others' conclusions when the task was to find the best answer under time pressure and noise. Furthermore, the desire to maximize and make the best decisions may also lead to social interactions and consultations with peers when making decisions, as individuals may turn to inform personal opinions and incorporate some of their peers' choices into their own. Namely, found that the availability of peers' information has an effect on decision-making, and participants switched from choosing individual options to a more unanimous decision-making when information was provided by others rather than by the host research team. Other studies also suggest that individuals' decisions are influenced by the environment, more specifically by individuals in one's social environment. People tend to conform to the decisions and preferences of others, as humans have a strong need for social approval and avoiding social disapproval. This desire for social acceptance and approval can greatly impact the decision-making process. In conclusion, the decision-making process is influenced by various factors such as culture, personal uniqueness, self-determination, motivation, and family and social determinants. These factors shape our choices and help us navigate through the complex decision-making environment. Understanding these influences and their impact on decision-making can lead to more effective and fulfilling choices. Chapter 5. Strategies for Effective Decision-Making Dan Gilbert has suggestions which are quite specific unlike Schwartz. Piggybacking our decisions onto the opinions of someone we trust is his suggestion. The lynching of John Dingle for his 2009 TARP vote illustrates that we have fewer choices now, but also societal pressure to conform. Next, and scientifically Abbott and Combs say the best decisions are made prefrontally. Excellent data was given to support their reasoning. Last and scientifically again, thinking differently about items we want to buy rather than to keep them is also a great decision-making strategy. Ralph Waldo Emerson had it right with his aphorism money often costs too much. George Cantor short-circuited the last 2,000 years and gave us the language of a timeless God with his mathematics. Money can't buy happiness or time. Normal people are faced with the burden of choosing from too many good things. For example, watching heat vis Colombiana. Any army is better than no army. It is good to see motivation for a combined army and rewrite of Lin's fourth generation war revisit Boyd's OODA loop, showing people may still want justice. Fichte is shown easily improvable and makes Galileo's science seem theologically absurd. Political accountability and Darwin make the mention of feel irrelevant. Swift may believe in God, getting hope. Finally, demographics may give Pogo the reversal to economic law. How then do we make good decisions in a world of too many choices? First, Barry Schwartz suggests that we should strive to be satisficers rather than maximizers. Maximizers always want to make the best choice, while satisficers make good enough choices. Success doesn't mean optimizing every choice. It means making choices that are good enough, not necessarily the grossest, most optimum choice. Secondly, we should limit our choices. Some things that we own and might consider eliminating. Giving up choosing where to eat, wearing a uniform, simplifying wardrobe, 
or having fewer choices means greater happiness. Another way to keep options in check is to outsource decisions. Finally, Schwartz suggests embracing certain voluntary constraints on our choices. Rock climbers report that their life is simple with so few choices. Another way to enforce imposed choice is volunteering because with so many worthy causes there will be a ton of choices but a narrowed focal point. It used to be that if you weren't prepared to work on an oil rig or pick crops in a field for a mechanized harvester, that you went to college and prospered. Psychologists have different labels for this. One label is satisficing, which is the opposite of maximizing. Another is lexicographicity, the act of comparing options on only one dimension at a time. Claim that most people choose without actively comparing and contrasting typical economic company, but instead by using the same unconscious process as that used in visual or olfactory detection processes. In their words, serial scanning helps even when people are suboptimal at predicting their own likes and dislikes. This means that rather than be blind in the dark, dissatisfied with their options, and often regretful, people are, or at least should be, striving to be myopic, indifferent, or, in a word, lazy. I expect there are exceptions to this rule. I expect that people anxious around decision-making, or people who feel regret and sadness at opportunities lost by their decisions, might actively try to reduce the number of choices they feel trapped by. This kind of finding would be interesting and provide some disanecdotal evidence that excessive choice is indeed at the root of at least some decision-making ills. However, some research suggests that the act of choice itself can be abhorrent. Argue that rarely does any decision-maker ever make a list of 12 or 12 million options and diligently go through each one, comparing the positive and negative aspects of each one with respect to possible utility what has been termed serial scanning. Instead, as any economist or marketing professor would tell you, humans improve their performance by quickly eliminating the inferior of a pair of options. It's true there is great power in goals. Their strength as organizing principles depends on their specificity. Goals add a lot of value in specific circumstances. For instance, people without goals are often neurotic. Each moment's activity is lost in oscillation of priority. They often neglect long-term pursuits and revert to first-order dictates, struggling to escape such baser concerns as oddly shaped French fries, which often elude them despite vehement struggle. It is probably one of the most important and least cited reasons for suffering from the tyranny of priorities that most of us exert as such little control over what deserves our attention. By setting a goal and writing up, or otherwise committing to, a specific plan, perhaps we can inoculate ourselves from the pernicious influence of willpower depletion. We don't deliberately set priorities and goals in order to resist getting what we want. Priorities, rather than being a means to an end, are an end in themselves. As a way of allocating attention, setting priorities is done simply for the sake of having priorities. This is usually a good thing. If we don't create a sense of priority and organization around our own vying desires and responsibilities, we become drolly devotional to life's maintenance tasks. The rub is that often by creating priorities we grow beholden to them in strength, unable to escape their allure and reclaim our mastery over where our attention goes. For novice decision makers, a good way to practice weighing choices is vital for each of these students of decision science. This experience also provides new challenges that engage the decision-makers in practice. This is a counterintuitive practice since our limited attention span and aim to simplify or reduce decision-making may make the paradox of choice even more overwhelming. Yet practice in data gathering and imitating the trade-off thinking of experts can play a pivotal role in overcoming and managing the paradox of choice. How to be able to better leverage learning once decision-makers have selected their source of information gathering, it is important to provide a systematic approach to acquiring specialized knowledge. There are four key strategies that can be implemented. There are a multitude of readily available tools and techniques that can be used to make better decisions to mitigate or eliminate the impact of decision fatigue 
and to reduce the cost of making a decision. First, it is important to understand sourcing information tools, Wikipedia, Quora, Google Scholar, plus traditional tools such as libraries, online catalogs, or seeking information from an expert in a structured manner, such as during an epic topic interview, can be leveraged to mitigate information overload and make better decisions, especially when time and experience are on their side. Chapter 6. Overcoming Choice Paralysis Traditional institutions of authority need to take concerted efforts to effectively address the pervasive impact of an overwhelming abundance of choice by putting in place comprehensive mechanisms that support and guide consumers. For instance, government organizations should develop and implement a user-friendly tool or platform that empowers clients with the knowledge of where to seek help and assistance if the required services are not readily available at the point of need. Similarly, financial companies can play a vital role by devising strategies to prioritize investment products, thereby enabling trusted advisors to streamline the numerous available options, facilitating a more manageable decision-making process. The objective is not to diminish or restrict the number of choices offered to consumers, but rather to narrow down the daily focus to a select few, allowing for more informed and efficient decision-making. Individuals who retain full control over their own financial decision-making processes stand to benefit significantly compared to those who merely rely on the decisions made by external parties. By ensuring access to readily available investment partners, the potential negative consequences of delays in action can be minimized, thus fostering a healthy and thriving investor community. In order to effectively overcome the challenges posed by the paradox of choice, it becomes imperative to grant consumers greater empowerment through various means. While it might not always be apparent, it is important to recognize that the act of making no decision is, in itself, a decision. For example, choosing not to invest and keeping one's money safe may seem like a prudent choice, but it often leads to loss of value due to inflation. Many consumers are aware of this dilemma and deliberately refrain from making a decision believing that they have no preference. However, this inaction can often result in dissatisfaction with the default option. While some individuals may attempt to evade the burden of decision-making with minimal effort, they often end up with outcomes that have a negative impact. Barry Schwartz, in his influential book, The Paradox of Choice, highlights the significant implications of excessive choice on democracy, individual determinations, and contextual factors designated as three distinct dimensions of what he calls the liberation of choice. According to Schwartz, each of us grapples with feelings of unease, dissatisfaction, uncertainty, fear, and regret as we navigate the multitude of paths in our life's journey. Consequently, societal considerations need to be taken into account to ensure acceptable outcomes regarding political and economic concerns. This is particularly relevant as individuals who struggle with limited access to basic resources, such as food, are unable to make morally sound choices. Likewise, individuals overwhelmed by an increasing number of options may find it challenging to navigate their way towards more favorable outcomes, both on an individual level and within the market. Moreover, the paradox of choice can undermine otherwise favorable options by introducing a range of negative consequences. The concept of decision-making paralysis, as elucidated by Schwartz, is frequently cited in relation to the challenges inherent in navigating everyday choices. In a world saturated with countless products and services, each marketed as the ultimate solution, Individuals often find themselves under immense pressure to select the best option. This pressure can render them paralyzed, trapped in a cycle of indecision, and plagued by the perpetual fear of making the wrong choice. Schwartz goes on to explore the implications of the paradox of choice in the realms of democracy, determination, and context, shedding light on the complex nature of this phenomenon. However, the prevailing image of self sufficiency, perpetuated by commercial advertisements, falls short when it comes to the reality of everyday decisions. 
there is an important lesson to be learned here. Our relentless pursuit of perfection can blind us to the inherent limitations of human decision-making. Should the solution to the overwhelming complexity of decision-making be the elimination of choices, retaining only a select few? Should we embrace a post-choice world where happiness is sought through perfectly tailored options like have-it-your-way chewy apple salt apple chunks? Schwartz argues against complete suppression of choices, considering it unrealistic, unadvisable, and ultimately undesirable. To delve deeper into this ongoing debate between freedom and an overabundance of choices, this paper aims to I. Shed light on the underlying principles of the paradox of choice, including personality traits, backgrounds, socio-environmental influences, and future expectations. I. Explore the consequences of living in an overload society, and I. D. Emphasize the significance of limitations and trade-offs in decision-making processes. Undoubtedly, individuals living in contemporary societies enjoy access to a wide array of superior services and goods unprecedented in human history. This abundance of options grants us an unparalleled sense of freedom in our decision-making. However, this seemingly limitless freedom also presents a paradoxical challenge, as the multitude of complex and bewildering choices that surround us can often lead to less than optimal outcomes. Regrettable decisions, decision paralysis, and a general aversion towards decision-making become all too common in this context. Embedded within the fabric of consumerist culture lies a self-defeating pressure to constantly achieve the highest possible returns from our choices. However, emerging empirical evidence suggests that most of us fail to harness our decision-making capabilities effectively when it comes to everyday choices. One potential approach to fostering a mindset of contentment and appreciation is to focus on the concept of enough. This concept emphasizes sufficiency and moderation as acts of justice, where individuals have a moral duty to define their wants and attach specific criteria to them. Only when these wants are met can they be considered enough. While one cannot exercise complete autonomy over the fulfillment of their desires, Working towards alleviating the suffering of others in a just manner can aid in tempering individual appetites for excessive consumption, thereby providing a more reasonable perspective on wants and needs. By ensuring that our wants remain within reasonable bounds, we create an opportunity for genuine contentment throughout the decision-making process. While contemplating the unintended consequences of the paradox of choice, it becomes evident that there are those who dismiss the notion of decision fatigue and the need for critical evaluation. Such critics tend to view individuals as ungrateful for the abundance of choices available to them, often disregarding the realities faced by those with significantly fewer options. These critics advocate for cultivating a mindset of acceptance and satisfaction with what one has, regardless of the quantity. This acceptance can only be achieved by acknowledging the inherent finiteness of resources and recognizing that an ever-increasing quantity does not equate to a better quality of life. By appreciating what one possesses, rather than constantly fixating on what one lacks, individuals can experience higher levels of satisfaction and happiness. Chapter 7. Implications for Personal and Professional Life in choosing what career path to take is often a psychological endeavor, and choosing too much is likely to make us less happy. This is because personal choice is not completely satisfying. Despite the choices we make that favor freedom, it is also important to think about whether our feelings are likely to become a roller coaster for making too many decisions. There are less significant decisions about picking up dinner plans, new cell phone choices, and personal purchase needs. But consumer demand also extends to more significant decisions, such as healthcare programs, types of death, retirement plans, and jobs. Our ultimate goal in choosing is to maximize well being. In all areas of daily life, we are likely to find not only the existence of limited options, but an overwhelming number of options. Too much choice is not always a good thing. While it can be a positive experience to imagine possibilities, Having more options does not always improve our subjective well-being. 
In personal and professional decision-making, it is important to carefully consider whether excessive choice increases our freedom and well-being. Personal choice can make us seem happier, but it is not likely to make us more happy. According to a wide range of studies, while choice may enhance the subjective value of the outcome, it also decreases the objective value of the outcome, and it is this action that leads to dissatisfaction. In personal and professional life, the implementation of taking away some of the choices can bring happiness and satisfaction. Schwartz promotes and challenges marketers and policymakers to begin to work on policies that can allow people to choose when not to choose. In a study conducted by Niles and Harris Bowlesby, 2009, it was revealed that participating in the assessments taught students a new way to manage the stress and responsibility of making career decisions. Students were able to begin understanding the concept that career decisions are outlined by changes to career choices and career decision-making. Students also began to develop a sense of self in conducting personal career decision-making practices. It can be argued that the sense of self develops as individuals are given the tools to assess their own skill sets, attitudes, and values. This, in turn, may help students become more effective career decision makers. According to Kalurev, Grills, and Brooks, 2016, the ability of individuals to experience opportunities and make sound career choices as a result of attending college is often impeded by the overburdening responsibilities of choice. For those who are overwhelmed with the responsibility of career choice or inability to make choices, opportunities are limited. Additionally, an individual's fear of making the wrong career decision may halt any forward progress in career choices. Hudson, 2008. Niles, 2007 C. Describes an individual making poor career decisions as someone who is generally unhappy, disengaged and unfulfilled in their career, who also may have physical and emotional health problems, career struggles, compromised relationships, and lost family opportunities. Given the above and social theorists who claim that people associate, marry, form groups, work, and invest in projects only in some cases chosen first by another person, or this research proposal includes the concept of a relationship in typical economic models, closing the uncertainty that exists in work. Previous research only determines what level of confidence a rational person can have in their final decisions without explaining how significant others influence them. With this investigation, it is possible to delve into the impact on other interests, such as social norms and decision-making. Claims that this is one of three areas to fully understand the impact of relationships on decision while in the works of and other areas are highlighted. In some situations, individuals are explicitly embedded in a social network when faced with certain choices. So it is convenient to understand how the relationship type affects these decisions. In seminal studies on decision dynamics, shows that whether a person joins a strike or borrows money does not depend on personal preferences, but rather on the number and type of contacts provided, asserts that behaviors and outcomes depend not only on payoffs, but also on social status as well as relationships that describe interactions. Most relationship-based economic models predict this behavior as equilibrium. Therefore, choosing a bank or a school for children is not just an economic issue. Rather, a social issue is involved as it also involves decision-making by significant others or that the final decision is joint. Generally, economic models involve a decision that concerns a single decision-maker and two or more options. Also, the tasks involved in the planning, conducting, and resolving that choice are usually purely individual. Provide a multidimensional approach to choosing a school for children by integrating the ability to choose into the Uzawa Lancaster model. In general, these jobs tend to bypass the discussion of imperfect information, particularly about how the characteristics or status of an evaluated person influence decision-making. Freedom, autonomy, and self-determination are closely aligned and are key to human beings to varying extents. They are essential, above satisfying desires, in achieving a sense of fulfillment of psychological needs. 
social and environmental factors are established as key determinants of experienced autonomy and freedom, suggesting that positive interaction and less negative interaction with others increases social support and empathy, which, in turn, increases autonomy needs satisfaction. Furthermore, perceiving oneself to be responsible for one's actions naturally involves choices and autonomy. Therefore, the level of freedom within one's life has a key role in generating overall life satisfaction. It is a factor within intrinsic life satisfaction, ILS. It earns appreciation as an underlying motivator for feelings of general life satisfaction. There are a vast number of factors which contribute to overall life satisfaction. According to the World Happiness Report, three key areas that are significantly associated with the overall happiness of an individual are health, social support, and personal freedom. Furthermore, there are statistically significant positive associations between personal freedoms and social support within a population. However, the report identifies a paradox of choice potentially due to the increasingly large number of choices people have over their lives. This view is often attributed to decision-making research. It is understood that personal choices are highly valued within Western cultures, and this is likely to be the case for individuals who feel more freedom in life. However, choice overload is a problem for people when there are too many options and too many choices to make and weigh. People freeze up and get lost. Exploring the impact of decision-making strategies upon the six domains of perceived autonomy Intrinsic life satisfaction, ILS, and self-expressive motivation could explain this paradox by investigating the importance of freedom to people who are satisfied with their lives. Despite the existing research on the correlation between personal choices and well-being, there is still a need for further investigation in this area. Understanding the relationship between choice, autonomy, and life satisfaction can help individuals make more informed decisions and live more fulfilling lives. By exploring the complexities of decision-making and the impact of relationships on choices, we can create a better understanding of human behavior and improve the well-being of individuals and societies. Chapter 8. Decision-Making in the Digital Age To navigate through the vast and complex communications like the World Wide Web, Computational algorithms have evolved to assist people in sorting through large sets of options. One strong manifestation of this sort of algorithm is through recommender systems. Currently, many ways of illustrating the diverse manner in which these algorithms reach out to people exist. These technological routes of providing sense-making overlap five main ways of offering choice that are most relevant to the paradox. Each diverges or aligns slightly depending on how people perceive their choice-making needs to be structured and to the range of options that people immediately identify when making a decision. The wide-scale availability of the Internet has irrevocably altered information exchange, with the diffusion of innovations no longer bounded by geography or social networks. Successful adoption of consumer technologies comes from not only the number of features it provides, but also how well those features are executed to satisfy human needs. The inverse is also true. If features do not meet consumers' needs, a larger number of features will theoretically decrease consumer behavior to adopt a new technology. The use of computational algorithms to provide convergent results from both broad and focused stimuli information is just as demanding as providing support for the specific paradox of choice pathways. These decision-making support systems consist of different kinds of recommendation technologies. The basic principle of these technologies is to provide suggestions for attractive items to support complex decision-making processes and focus the user's attention primarily on the fulfillment of attractive website products. Recommenders can be classified into different types, core, content-based, collaborative-based, ensemble, of which the core technological interrelations play the essential role. Good outcomes can be expected through a combination of these technologies across the roadmap in four highly important recommendations, but the numerous recommendations are not a solution to the problem of the paradox of choice. 
However, what is still not very clear is how these systems are examined in order to make those suggestions and in particular to what range, and it is known. 110 researches were carried out on port sites, among which there are very few interactions reported. The influence of technology and information overload for customers sometimes causes them to feel overwhelmed and stressed and can paradoxically slow down further choices and decision-making with digital systems. The paradox of choice alone points to the quantity of interactions as a major problem. Some authors say that a good architecture of the interaction or structure or signposts in the digital environment created in order to encourage an effective choice in the digitalized chain of buying process can prevent the negative side of choice. People are looking for faster and simpler ways to make decisions. That could be a reason why online stores are implementing decision support tools. Overall, decision support software has been implemented in roughly 10% of revenue-generating websites, often in broadline categories that suffer from high search and information costs, 63.5%, such as books or consumer electronics. In the past few years, online shopping has witnessed the growth and transformation towards today's fast-growing trillion-dollar network of e-commerce platforms. As e-tailers strive to individualize product prices and promote better staple items, our study underscores the importance of understanding the complex dynamics of customer choice satisfaction. Decision-making support systems encompass various recommendation technologies that aim to provide suggestions for attractive items, focusing on fulfilling users' needs and supporting complex decision-making processes. These technologies can be classified into different types, including core, content-based, collaborative-based, and ensemble recommenders, with the core technological interrelations playing a vital role. While a combination of these technologies can yield positive outcomes, it is important to note that numerous recommendations alone do not solve the paradox of choice. However, there is a lack of clarity regarding how these systems are examined to make suggestions and the extent of their known range. Limited interactions were reported among the 110 researches conducted on port sites, signaling the need for further investigation. The influence of technology and information overload often leads to feelings of overwhelm and stress among customers, paradoxically slowing down decision-making with digital systems. The paradox of choice emphasizes the quantity of interactions as a major issue. Some authors argue that a well-designed architecture of interaction in the digital environment can prevent the negative aspects of choice, effectively facilitating effective decision-making in the digital buying process. As people seek faster and simpler ways to make decisions, online stores have started implementing decision support tools. Currently, decision support software has been implemented in approximately 10% of revenue-generating websites, particularly in categories with high search and information costs, such as books or consumer electronics. The past few years have witnessed the exponential growth and transformation of online shopping into a trillion-dollar network of e-commerce platforms. The ability to individualize product prices and promote staple items highlights the importance of understanding the complex dynamics of customer choice satisfaction. Contrary to previous marketing models, offering a larger assortment of products does not always result in more satisfied shoppers. This finding challenges market managers when deciding whether to promote non-recommended products or desired deal items. The framework for understanding the dynamics of choice satisfaction becomes an indispensable component in the creation of intelligent and user-centric e-commerce websites, mobile interfaces, and web-based recommendation services. Examining online group buying websites like Groupon or the purchase of non-recommended products on Amazon.com provides insights into the impact of choice on customer satisfaction. Contrary to popular belief, more options do not necessarily lead to higher satisfaction. Psychologist Barry Schwartz's research on the paradox of choice in 2004 revealed that an overload of options negatively affects decision quality and overall satisfaction. 
Analyzing individual-level data collected from Groupon customers further supports this finding, showing that the number of available deals does not directly predict purchase intentions but affects overall satisfaction with available purchases. Buyer's remorse, an experience characterized by devaluing the chosen alternative and perceiving the unchosen option as more attractive, often occurs during the post-choice period. Madero and Pauke, 2015, identify two ways in which this phenomenon manifests. The chosen alternative is not as good as initially believed, generating doubts and buyer's remorse, and the characteristics of the rejected alternatives are revaluated re with a more critical perspective, focusing on their positive aspects and minimizing negative aspects. The abundance of studies analyzing choice, its implications, and the strategies used in decision-making highlights the prevalence of an excess of choice. This chapter explores tactics to manage the multitude of aspects and values constantly presented for comparison. While no single strategy is deemed the best, alternative approaches have emerged and are progressively implemented, aligning with expectations and personal preferences. Ultimately, the diversity of options and strategies reflects individuals' decision-making styles, which are influenced by their preferences and personal circumstances. Chapter 9. Practical Applications in Case Studies Practical applications and case studies of choice architecture are so numerous that space will not permit me to undertake an extensive listing. Just to mention three, Nutcord, under the guidance of Richard Taylor, propelled policies in the United Kingdom. Similar policies were also supported in Denmark, Germany, and Japan. In the United States, the government established the Nudge Unit to assist people in making more careful choices. Internationally, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau in the United States and a number of charities also support policy innovation and changes. As mentioned earlier, the works of Sunstein and Taylor, Samuelson and Zechhauser, Iyengar and Iyengar and Kamenica demonstrate an extensive list of successful marketing strategies in contemporary business management, while the Koch brothers and John Butcher extended the impact to the insurance market. In summary, it is clear that automated decision procedures are the norm, and when people have to choose from an ever-expanding list of options, they are poised to make mistakes. Practical Applications and Case Studies The paradox of choice literature underlines the benefits of limiting options. In grocery stores, psychologists Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman demonstrated that customers are more likely to make a purchase when confronted by six different types of jam than 24. WooCommerce indicates, through its motion graphic video, a 300% increase in sales when customers were given fewer options. Providing fewer options increases sales. The same effect is observed in the choice of funds. Cook goes further, suggesting that people rely on external factors, price, place, or even product, when differences between products become less apparent, bringing the decision closer to chance. By the same token, Einingar and Kamenica argue that the psychic cost of using extreme choice options effectively made the U.S. retirement plan less popular while another study underscores the ill effect of over-optionality, which can leave people less satisfied with their pleasurable experiences over time, jeopardizing their overall happiness. In giving a workshop at the Bubble Forum, Hinacom revealed that even at the consultant's level, this intrinsic durationalizing constraint is not taken into account by decision-makers. The two opposing points of view between the business world and the research world are the number of criteria, usually an important index for business people, whereas this is usually not the case with researchers, as they are quite aware of the matter previously mentioned, and the complexity of a research-oriented decision-making process. Indeed, business organizations engage heavily in the Pareto analysis and rank their criteria neatly in the level of importance, which is not at all a requirement in the research world. In the corporate world, the consequences of decision-making are also rarely limited to the decision-makers themselves, with a palpable impact on the employees, clients, and even society as a whole. Maladapted decision-making process might lead to employees' frustration, stress, 
early burnout, and even paranoia, which is likely to have a deleterious effect on the company's productivity. It has been shown that people who are placed in an environment of consumerism and superabundance feel pressured, discontent, and unhappy while they expect to be happy because of the abundance they are experiencing. Dealing with this kind of pressure requires decision-making, and once again, making a decision implies constraints about relations between people, decision-makers, or other people involved in the decision-making that could lead, at least to frustration at worst, onto negative feelings like anger, stress, depression, anxiety, or psychosis, as internet addicts have witnessed since the internet enables them to act in shops more easily. The area in which our study primarily stems from is within the field of marketing, with an interest in understanding how the amount of choices influences consumer buying behavior, and more importantly, what companies can do to help lead customers to the products or services that are most appropriate for their needs. Although the paradox of choice has gained an overwhelming amount of citation over the years, Empirical studies that have examined how the presentation of product choices affects a consumer's decisions and put forward empirically observed, commercially viable, and refreshingly simple improvements have not been as common. In their classic book, The Paradox of Choice, Schwartz, 2004, argues that while we may think that having a lot of choice serves us better and that we are happier the more we have to choose from, research shows that the opposite may be the case. Simplifying the set of optional choices would lead to more satisfaction. This opinion has received overwhelming attention. For one, there is evidence that we take longer to make choices when we have more options, and that even if we are satisfied with the decision we make, there is a greater chance that we will later regret the choices we have made if we had more options to choose between when making our decision. Since then, a variety of study areas have explored methodologies for developing the most effective decision support tools that can be utilized in such contexts, borrowing from both decision theory, behavioral economics, and operations management. To represent a choice that concludes following extended evaluation and consideration of options, choose from a decision to transition careers. Encouraged to pursue what excited us, we chose engineering and design of devices and systems that improved health and accessibility. After earning degrees and beginning work at NASA, Medtronic, and other employers, and as consultants, these experiences shaped new professional dreams of building a successful ethics-centered, multidisciplinary, healthcare-related business. Considering these dreams against what was learned, known, recognized, and good enough, decisions were made to lead our then employers, individually and collaboratively. Unanimously, these final decisions were necessary, meaningful, and founded on considerable decision and option assessment activity. In the context of work, many mature professionals or older adults reconsidered their careers, some in detail, to better find jobs they enjoyed and found fulfillment in. This is not easy for those not willing or able to regularly learn and consider a wide breadth of options and to be sure they knew enough about those options to make a confident choice. Yet the rewards to those finding work they truly enjoyed were remarkable, motivating many to share their experiences regularly with younger individuals. This showed the benefits of spending time considering various options. To conclude these thought-provoking discussions of decision-making and choice, Consider the four examples below from real life by two female authors, a professor in electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech and a recent honors student in electrical and bioengineering at Georgia Tech and UPIT. Conclusion. One of the most pervasive and elusive meanings of existence is the choices we make every day. From what we are going to have for dinner to where to go on vacation or how to spend our time on weekends, people have to make many different choices. Those of us who prefer to simply manage the time when we make choices after the daily life begins to speculate about the options of life that are offered by the increasing prosperity of our civilization in theory.
This is because most people assume mentally that the increased number of opportunities illustrates an appreciation of the life experienced by the choices taken. We are bombarded with choices every day of our life, and our reactions to those choices play a crucial role in how happy we are. To become happier, all people have to learn to value their choices instead of treating them as obligations. Careful management of choices allows people to move away from what makes them most happy in the short run and to steadily accumulate well-being in the long run. Also, it is apparent from our discussion that happiness is a product of the choices we make. Although people may sometimes have the illusion of helpless determination by the choices they made in the past, happiness will never be truly satisfied unless freedom is exercised. One other aspect was touched upon in Section 9 to the effect that the most problematic impact of capital sourcing structures need not stem from the link between actual investor behavior and developer delay but from a general belief among the developer community that capital sourcing will either delay their projects or make them entirely unfeasible. The inherent uncertainty of establishing the economic viability of a project based on the available capital structures, therefore, can drive a market-wide collapse in construction activity, even when specific investor behavior linked to a particular project is completely unproblematic. Later sections dispute in further detail the apparent equilibrium status of the key insight. Indeed, the insight can be seen as essentially that of a non-equilibrium chain reaction-like process during which capital sourcing restrictions drive further restrictions in a feedback loop that closes out market development. The third key insight from Section 9 was that capital sourcing is characterized by an inherently uncertain relationship between how much money comes in and any profit this can generate. A developer may have a perfectly good development project to develop, but whether this project can be completed hinges crucially on an aspect of investor decision-making that the developer cannot influence at all. The immediate implication is that developers are reluctant to make the investment needed to access good projects. This again has a resource allocation impact. The investors that the developers do not seek as a result of the uncertainty deficit linkage are theoretically suited to undertake this task, but normally cannot. The potential collapse of the capital sourcing structures translates directly into a collapse in potential development activity. Thus, to the extent that important unsettled questions still exist, it is important to remember the limitations of our current knowledge base and therefore act with caution when drawing firm conclusions about how others should behave. Second, I want to reiterate that while maximizing may lead to feelings of anxiety and regret, for some people, at some times, it is the best available coping strategy for dealing with choice overload. Indeed, constructive uses for these emotions and behaviors can be found in many settings. Success in many fields requires great effort and goal-focused behaviors, and there is little doubt that maximizing can sometimes play a large role in accomplishing great things. In closing this book, in this the final chapter, a few general observations are in order. First, despite a massive literature on decision-making, there remain a large number of unanswered questions regarding how people make decisions and whether we are better off having more rather than fewer choices. One implication of this observation is that the set of practical authorities from which we can draw advice has become smaller, despite the explosion in descriptively relevant advancements in social science. So while the set of experts on choice has grown, there remain many foundational issues regarding choice that have not been settled. Moreover, it is impossible to go a week without reading a column by some pundit who has read our best-selling popular behavior economics book and then draws prescriptive conclusions from our work. And it is precisely these conclusions that we need to approach with caution. The complexity and variability of human decision-making cannot be reduced to simple formulas or one-size-fits-all prescriptions. The human experience is too rich and diverse for such oversimplifications. We must recognize that our understanding of choice is always evolving and that there will always be more to learn. When it comes to the impact of choices on our happiness, it is important to understand that happiness is not solely determined by external circumstances, but also by our internal reactions to those circumstances. 
Each choice we make has the potential to either enhance or diminish our sense of well-being. Therefore, it is crucial to value our choices and approach them with a sense of mindfulness and appreciation. In the realm of capital sourcing and development, the relationship between investor behavior and project feasibility can be highly uncertain. Developers often find themselves at the mercy of investor decisions, which can significantly impact the success or failure of their projects. This uncertainty can create a risk-averse environment where developers are hesitant to invest in potentially good projects, leading to a decline in overall construction activity. As we navigate these complex issues, it is important to acknowledge the limitations of our knowledge and exercise caution when making conclusions about others' behaviors. The field of decision-making is vast and multifaceted, and there is much we still don't fully understand. Rather than relying on oversimplified advice, we should embrace the nuance and complexity of human decision-making and recognize that what works for one person may not work for another. In closing, we must acknowledge that decision-making is a profoundly intricate process that is influenced by a myriad of factors. While there may be no definitive answers or one-size-fits-all solutions, it is through ongoing exploration and open-mindedness that we can continue to expand our understanding and make informed choices. May this journey of discovery lead us to a greater appreciation for the power of choice and its impact on our lives. If you found this content enriching and valuable, we would be deeply grateful if you could express your appreciation through liking and subscribing. Your support is incredibly meaningful and enables us to continue creating content that resonates with you. For those who think this is a great gift for yourself or for your loved ones, you can find the link in the description.